episode of Car Warriors. What the f*** is going on, dude? Is this some kind of a joke? The Inland Empire takes on the OC, customizing 71 Chevy Camaros. Why are we fighting this thing so hard? With 48 hours and zero sleep, only one team will walk away with a win and their car. I'm Jimmy Shine, and I hold several land speed world records. I also run the best speed shop in Southern California. For me, it's all about style and power. I have searched for the best custom car builders in the country to take on my challenge. Create the ultimate automotive transformation in just 48 hours. Starting with two mystery cars. <laughs> a dream collection of parts, and with the help of my two lead mechanics, Brad Fanshaw, he's been customizing cars for over 25 years and has won both Ford and GM Design Awards. And Ray McClellan, he's the owner of Full Throttle Customs, specializing in tuning street machines that have in excess of 1,000 horsepower. They'll have just 48 hours to transform their cars from scrap to <laughs> part right there, the showroom. The winner gets to keep their car. But first, they need to impress me. My shop, my rules. Nobody quits in this shop. It's time to gear up for battle. This is Car Warriors. For this battle on the red side of the garage from Orange County, California, Hot Rod Hooligans. My shop has an advantage because we're a really versatile, broad spanned shop. We're well known for everything from A to B spectrum. Orange County has some of the best car builders, fabricators in the world. I hate to sound conceited, but there's a reason why my guys have made me the team leader. I have more skills in my toolbox probably than anybody out there. Two days ago, my wife gave birth to uh, our, our beautiful twin girls. Uh, so I had to unfortunately step away from them to do this build. When we walk away victorious, I'm dedicating it to my wife and kids. And their opponent on the blue side from Riverside, California, Inland Empire Customs. I'm only 29 years old and I'm pretty proud of uh, uh, being at this age and where I'm at and where my shop is at as well. My shop's called Inland Empire Auto Body and Paint. What we love doing is, is restorations. This has always been my dream to own my own shop. The group of guys that I have, I know what they can do and I know they won't let me down. Isaac's a real good team leader. He's young, he's got the energy, he can keep a clear thought, and everybody clicks, works together. I'm gonna show them what we can do in the Inland Empire. Gentlemen, here's the drill. You've got just 48 hours to build these vehicles that I've selected for you. When time's up, I'm gonna decide who used their 48 hours the best. And the team that impresses me the most, not only are you gonna walk away from here being the Car Warriors winners and have those bragging rights, well, you also get to take that car home that you worked so hard to build. And the team that loses, unfortunately, you're going home empty-handed. But before we start, I've got some good news. I'm gonna give you guys a little extra help to make it to that finish line. I'm giving you two of my lead techs. Guys, come on out. Each team has been randomly assigned a lead technician. For this build, Ray will be assisting the red team and Brad will be assisting the blue team. All right, guys. You ready to see what you're gonna be working on? Oh, yeah! yeah. All right. Brad, Ray, would you be so kind as to remove the covers from these cars? Chevrolet Camaros. The Chevy Camaro was built on the GM F-Body platform. It was introduced in 1967, specifically to compete with the highly popular Ford Mustang. I had seven cars by the time I was a senior in high school, and two of them were Camaros. When I first saw the car, I was really excited. I love this car. I think it's going to be a great build. As always on Car Warriors, we start this competition with a challenge. The first team to get their car up on the lift, remove the original engine, place them in the victory boxes here in front of these hoists. 
will get their first choice of one of these engines behind me. To my left, small block Chevrolet, 383 cubic inches, tri-power carburation. This engine makes over 425 horsepower. This engine to my right, it too is a small block Chevrolet, 383 cubic inches. It's got a couple more go-fast goodies. You'll notice the dual quad carburation and the supercharger. This particular engine makes over 650 horse. All right, if everybody understands the rules, Riverside. Yes. yes. Orange County. Yeah. The competition starts now. All right, guys, let's win this thing. One. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hard, as hard as you can. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. We got it. Come on, right up on it. Straight back, straight back, straight back. First thing I noticed about the red team that I was assigned to is they seem to work well together. We got on a lift fast, and Jim, the team leader, really knows what he's doing. That's good enough right there. No, Isaac, no, you're the other way, you're the other way, you're the other way. No, 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 no. We're way too far over. One more. No, no, straight. Too much. Back the other way, back the other way. Straight, straight, straight. We were so hyped up. First thing we did was got that car on the lift, and it wasn't real straight on the lift, quote, unquote, to say the least. We're too far on the lift, aren't we? When we got it on the rack, we were a little, little sideways. But I looked at it, we had two thirds of the rear tire on. It was dangerous to look at, but I knew it was still safe. Pop the hood. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. All right, I'm calling it out. Going up. 916s. During the motor challenge, uh, the team was working well together. We got everything done extremely fast. Uh, we looked over, we could see that we were definitely ahead of the other team. The team here from Orange County has gone so far as to even move their tools over close to the car. That's smart, keep them close. I don't see that happening with the other team as yet. They're a little behind right now. Come on, come on. Six point sockets, I need 15, 16, six point sockets. Somebody listen up, he's calling out tools, please. Here you go. All right, fuel line's off. The hooligans from Orange County right now are ahead. They got one guy underneath taking the transmission apart. We got three guys up on top disconnecting all the motor mounts. They got the radiator route. That's it over. Fan shroud. These guys are hauling ass right now. After a slow start for the blue team from Riverside. Come on, baby. Fernando ceases control. Hold it, Isaac. Add it up. Oh. You ready? Out of everybody on the whole team. The engine compartment, the suspension, and everything, that's my thats my forte. That's what I do. You know, I yank motors all the time. So, you know, I told him exactly what the plan of action was. We were like barracudas, man. We just attacked it, man, from all sides. Fernando, what do you need? I need a 5.8, a 5.8 a wrench. Hurry up. These guys are over there standing on the windshield, standing on the fender tops, and all kinds of dumbass dogs. You're going to see these guys are climbing up on the lift. That's a potential for danger and damage and death. Let me just say this. I saw somebody at my shop pulling a bozo move like that and trying to pull that motor out. They'd be looking for a new job. Hey, have a look at these guys. The hooligans already have the cherry picker out. They're on their game. Everything was going good. We were ahead of the competition. None of these sockets are working. It's stripped out. Let's go to the next one. We got underneath the car and found out that the motor mount bolts were stripped. Why the f want that bastard? Come on. They were stripped. They were destroyed. We, we couldn't get it apart. You know, right now, this is anybody's race. Hey, bring the hoist. I'm going to bring the hoist over here. Good, good. Did you get motor mount bolts? Yeah, I got a bolt. Does not want to budge. Here we go, here we go. Check out Brad, man. He looks like he's a, a chimpanzee swinging in the jungle. Go, let's see, let's go. Everybody, let's push. They already got the motor starting to come out. We're going, we just got a strip bolt under here, Jim. Start pumping, go. Don't wait for me. Keep going, keep going. Start pulling, man. Don't worry about spark plugs or anything, just go. What's the deal, Ray? Does it just not want to come out? The thing's just spinning. Come on, guys, pull it. Pull it hard. Keep coming. Keep coming. Come on, we're not out of it yet. Let's keep working. There we go. Come on, we're almost there, guys. Break the chains and we'll be behind. You all right? Yeah. Okay, up and out. Don't let it swing. Straight back. We got it. All right. There you go, team. Yeah. It looked messy, but we smoked that team. You know, we intimidated them from the get go. That's how we do in Riverside. All right, Riverside. Riverside, you guys did a good job. You won the challenge. Gentlemen, you get your choice of an engine. 
What's it gonna be, Isaac? Try power. Try power. Yeah. Try power. We got what we wanted anyway, baby. Interesting. Why didn't you take the blower motor? Well, I can answer that. I mean, we don't need the horsepower. Right? We want the hood to show the paint as well. So that's why we went with a smaller one. Mm, okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, brothers. Coming up. There's a big potential for a big problem. Obviously, we got to do something that's too high. A little worried with Brian cutting the hood right now because you only get one shot. After nearly defeating the red team from Orange County in the engine challenge, the blue team from Riverside has surprisingly chosen the smaller engine as their prize. We got what we wanted anyway, baby. Okay, the engine challenge is over. The parts cage is now open. Let's go. Come on, guys. In the Car Warriors parts cage, there's everything these teams need to build their Camaros. Transmissions, hoods, suspension kits, electronics, steering wheels, and a wide selection of hand-cooked tires. This would be good for the back. And then, these, 35. then we can do these 245s up front. If we're looking with the power that we have in this car, I think we should still consider the 255-35. And we have a set of four right there. Just go a set of four all the way around. Sounds like a plan. Cool. Let's grab them. With their hand-cooked tires, the red team strategically takes what they feel are better parts than the blue team. I think they were busy grabbing things that weren't as important as what they should have been grabbing. My guys were focusing on things that are going to give the car an overall, you know, way better appearance on the end result. We got the wheels that we wanted. There was a nice set of taillights in here. There was only one set. So we delegated one guy to that. There was an RS front end up there. There was only one. We got that. And this RS kit will change the entire look of their car's front end, making it more aggressive. This sparks the team into their design meeting, and the goal is to keep their car classic. Okay, uh, uh, the concept for this car, here's what I'm thinking, is clean American muscle. Big blower motor, clean paint, hot rod interior, leather, suede, real clean, trimmed out. We definitely want to do something with the paint that reflects uh, something that's comparable to the era. You should have let the paint department do that, because that's messed up. There you go, dude. You know, you have the big blower motor coming through the hood, shaving all the marker lamps, shaving the door handles. Get a little bit more elaborate on the interior that leans more towards like new school street rod. The car needs a name. I was thinking the hooligan, since we are the hooligans. Let's hooligan it up. Hooligan! Over with the blue team from Riverside, lead tech Brad discusses the design concept with his team. What's your overall theme for the car? Well, an overall theme is is a, it's a muscle car. I mean, I know we're going muscle, but we're putting a little, a little taste of the Inland Empire, you can say. This is a second generation Camaro, so it's a muscle car. This is a nice American muscle car. So we wanted something loud. So they decided to go with the orange. What about bumpers? We're going to split the bumpers up front? All right, we're going to split okay. the bumper in the front. We wanted to do something crazy with the paint job, so we were thinking some monsters in there. I just knew it had to be extreme, so everyone's asking me what we're going to do, and I just tell them, ah, it's a surprise. <laughs> Robert hasn't told me exactly what he wants to do, but man, from the sounds of it, it's going to be epic. We wanted to put some monsters inside our graphics, so we ended up calling it the Orange Monster. All right, let's go. All right. All right. Cool. With both teams' designs in place, they can now start focusing on the four essential elements to building a car. Engine and transmission, suspension, body and paint, and interior. With the blue team's old engine out, they've taken the lead. With 45 hours left in the build, the hooligans settle some unfinished business with their old engine, and team leader Jim is in good spirits. We lost the team challenge. The blue team gave up this motor because they were scared of it, but uh, we're going we're gonna to come out ahead. We'll, t we'll accept the challenge, we'll get this motor in, and, and we'll turn out victorious in the end. Each team splits up to tackle all their tasks, and for the next few hours, everyone is building furiously. Over on the hooligan side, Willie is working on the interior by modifying some seats they took from the parts cage. This is actually the original seat that came out of the car. I don't think it's going to be a good idea to use it. So we're going to go ahead and stick with this seat. We're going to have to modify it. It's going to be a lot of work, but I think it's going to be worth doing it. But Willie's seats are just one aspect of an extremely ambitious interior for the hooligans. I'm a little stressed out right now. We got a lot of stuff to accomplish in a very short amount of time. Um, we basically have to fab the whole rear back panels. We're eliminating the back seats. All the audio is inside the cabin of the car. I'm going to try a few shortcuts and things that help speed up the process, but it's going to be a challenge. 
over on the blue side. They're also working feverishly on their interior. But Jillian is working on their car's original seats. This is the first time I've ever done something like this in 48 hours. I have to do the seats and the console, and then I leave the door panel last. Meanwhile, Greg is laying speaker wire throughout the blue team's Camaro for the audio system and gauge cluster. It's going to be uh, like another 24-hour job right here. While the interior for both teams is well underway, Tim on the blue team has decided to upgrade their suspension with traction bars, also known as slapper bars. A slapper bar is a traction device. This is old school. Grew up in Riverside. We're all just poor kids, you know. We wanted the hot rod and the hot look. If you had a Camaro or any kind of leaf spring car at that point in time, the trick ticket was slapper bars. You ever see a car do a burnout with parallel leaf without any kind of traction control? The rear end actually chatters. So the team from Riverside, what they did is they built this bar that comes forward and it has a snubber on it, a rubber bumper. So as this rear end wants to twist and come up, this bumper contacts the bottom of the spring at this pickup point. What that does is allows the rear end to twist just enough to shock the tires, plant them, and keep it from winding up and unloading. It's actually quite an effective way of um, getting traction control for your car. Go on, Betty. It's six hours into the build. The blue team has finished working on their traction bars and are well on their way to finishing their suspension, while the hooligans face the challenge of dropping in their oversized blower motor. Well, you can see it right now. There's a big potential for a big problem. As they try to get the proper angle on that motor and transmission to get it into the car to shoehorn it in there, I think that chain is going to take out the velocity stacks and potentially the carburetors as well. All right, so what's your plan for getting this motor in there? We're going to roll this down onto the floor and get the two front tires on the ground and leave the rear on the rack. My team leader, Jim, actually had a really cool idea. He wants to lift the back of the car to give us the right angle to get that motor in. If you can't tilt the motor, we'll tilt the car. Actually, I think he's onto something. Okay, down a little bit. Right side needs to go back about an inch. Yep, easy. Okay, you want some more down? A little more. Oh, there it is. Over on the blue side, Tim has moved on to the front suspension, but he's not happy with how high the front end of the car is sitting. Obviously, we got to do something that's too high. You know, we got to get it down in the weeds. We'll just, we'll just get it up. We'll cut a couple coils and get, get the nose down. Jimmy Shine happens to overhear their plans to cut the coils and is growing concerned. They're talking about actually taking one of their coil springs and actually cutting one coil at a time. That's one complete revolution. One full coil is a radically large amount. My suggestion would be maybe a quarter at a time. If they cut too much, the car is going to be too low. It's actually going to put the tire up into the fender well and rub, not allowing you to steer or anything. The car won't even roll. Meanwhile, the hooligans may have solved the problem of getting their engine installed, but now comes the delicate task of cutting their hood for the blower motor. And to make matters worse, Ryan, their lead mechanic, has never done this before. He begins by making a template that he then sketches under the hood. The measurements need to be exact. little worried with Ryan cutting the hood right now because he's never done it before and you only get one shot. I don't know if I can watch this. Coming up. Both teams have been working flat out for 24 hours. Put in a pile. It takes its toll on you. Why are we fighting this thing so hard? After five long hours, Ryan has finally finished cutting the hood. Finally. But it still remains to be seen if his measurements are correct. When we lowered it down, the gaps are really nice. I'm really happy with this cut. You did a great job. Yeah, cutting the hood, it took a long time. I didn't expect it to take quite that long. I'd never done it before. But in the end, I think it turned out pretty nice. 
with their hood cut and their engine installed, the hooligans are now ahead. There are 30 hours left in the build. Both teams have been working through the night, and fatigue has set in, most notably with Jim, the leader of the hooligans. I came into this challenge already not sleeping for three days. My wife gave birth to our two twins a day and a half before coming to the show. Both teams have been working flat out for 24 hours. I mean, it takes its toll on you. Oh. Nine hours after the hooligans got their engine installed, the blue team is finally ready to install theirs. It should fit easily, but something goes wrong. That ain't it, man. Why are we fighting this thing so hard? Jeez. On the motor situation, I had a little bit of a problem. It wasn't lining up. The mounts are all crooked. Such a pain for an easy motor, man. When I was dropping it, it was hitting, like right here, it was hitting the frame, so it wasn't allowing it to drop. So I had to lift it up, take it out. I had Tim grind it off. How do I cut that off? Suss off, man. Look here. Suss off. This is killing us in time. With the red team's engine in and their hood cut, they're now moving on to installing their RS front end conversion kit. They make excellent time cutting off the front end of their car to suit the kit, but as soon as they try to mount it, they hit another problem. These go in here, supposedly, Correct. but there's nothing to bolt it to. These RS kits are really cool, but changing the front end is a lot of work, and I'm not sure we're going to have enough time. I'm getting a little bit frustrated, you know. I got my primer mixed up. I'm ready to go and these guys won't leave the car alone. I know they're my teammates and everything, but it's getting serious. If I don't get this primer on, we're never gonna get this paint job done. Both teams are facing serious setbacks. The blue team is unable to install their engine, and the red team unable to install their RS kit. And Jimmy Shine is starting to get concerned. Quite honestly, I, I know, you know, we've talked about this, that all those little things, those unforeseen things are gonna come up and just bite us in the ass here in the end. So somebody's got to make, and when I say somebody, I pretty much mean you guys are going to have to really pull the trigger on this. This stuff has got to be in the booth and getting squirted. Let's get these guys moving. Got it. So basically where we're at right now is we need to get this car in the booth, you know? We really can't afford that much time. Okay. Bottom line is this thing has to go in the paint. I mean, we're way behind schedule. We have no time to waste. Jeff tries to figure out a solution for the RS kit, but eventually gives up. Hey, we can't find a car. Let's just get the car in the booth. I'll move all this. Let's get going. This competition is giving me a headache. This is tough. Oh, it's a car right there. Who put in a pile? These 48 hour builds are about problem solving, and when you misplace a part like we did on that RS kit, that's embarrassing. Sure, I moved a piece, and there's a bag, and I looked at it, and I go, let's do it, let's get this thing going. With their newfound part, the red team finished bolting on their RS kit, but the damage has been done. Tom's primer has dried up. That's what happens when you let it set for too long. So this could put us back three to five hours. Meanwhile, Tim on the blue team has finished grinding off the motor mount, and they're ready to try to install their engine again. As soon as I got that and slid the bolts in there and everything, it was perfect. Yeah, all right. Way to go, guys. Finally. Yeah. Now, this should have fit like a glove. Really shouldn't have been a big problem. But what I'm proud of is the fact that they found the problem, they solved it, and they made it happen. I want to win as bad as they do. Both teams are in serious trouble. It's been over 24 hours, and they're still not in paint. Jimmy Shine decides to step in. I've got my own idea how to get this ball rolling. All right, teams, everybody put your tools down. We're stopping the clock for a couple minutes. We got a little challenge planned for you guys. We're going to have a, we're gonna have a little welding test here. The welder who does the best job, their team will receive an additional hour of build time. We need that extra hour. We were behind. That was make or break. We were running out of time. I need each team to put forth their best welder. Pick out your best welder and bring him forward. Riverside, let's go, Jimmy! Yeah! So we got Tim over here. Tim, take a seat, please. Tim's definitely a master at welding. He's the most experienced. I mean, that's all he does is weld. Looks like Jim over here has volunteered himself. When the Metalwork Challenge came up, you know, I definitely nominated myself. 
Um, the team had no issue with that. You know, obviously my strong suit is metal fabrication, uh, fabrication background. I definitely wanted to get in there for my team and make something happen. What we've got here is a simple welding test. You'll see before you two pieces of 18 gauge steel. Simple, you guys are both accomplished welders. Butt weld them together, hammer them, grind them, metal finish, if at all possible. I would like to see something along the lines of this. Is that understood? You guys agree? Are we good to go? Yes, sir. Okay, you've got 15 minutes. Do a good job. Win that hour for your team. The clock starts now. Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. Coming up. What's going on, dude? Where's Tom? I'm not gonna bust my ass because a guy would want to paint a car faster. Let's see if this actually works. We're at the halfway point, and Jimmy has stopped the clock, so the teams can face off in a welding challenge. The winning team gets an exceptionally valuable prize, an extra hour of build time. The clock starts now. Let's go, Jim. Let's go, Jim. We were cheering Jim on as best we could to get him to finish this thing off and take that hour. Tim is just exhausted. He's over there. I don't know if I can hold that stick straight. My arm's shaking like crazy. Nice and easy, buddy. You got it. Yeah, you ought to be my hands. You have eight minutes left on the clock. This is neck and neck. You're a pro, man. Come on. Experience, experience. All right. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Seven minutes. There's that young kid over there just slapping him. Okay, I'm watching, I'm watching him. Also, with about like six minutes left, he stops and sits back like, hey, I'm done. You know what? That was too cocky. That was arrogant. That show disrespect to my guy? I didn't like that. It's quick on the draw. Premature, premature grinding. Nobody does that kind of work in a 15-minute time frame. That shows you how much talent that man possesses to just bust that out. You're like, I'm done. I don't even want to go anymore. You can have your other six, seven minutes. I was shocked to see Jim finish that welding challenge so quickly. But when I looked over at Tim, I saw that he just wanted to do a much better weld than Jim. Tim was going for quality. This was going to be a tight race. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Tools down. That's it, man. All right, all good right. job. There you go, man. All right, wait up. Jimmy Shine is going to judge the challenge based on speed and quality. I would say, with the exception of a couple pits here, that those two are almost identical. And I'm really impressed with your ability as a welder, both of you. That being said, he's got you by about four minutes. This team wins. Good job. Uh, you know, definitely winning the challenge for my team feels wonderful. I finished in half the time of the blue team, uh, so it definitely makes me feel great, definitely solidifies why I'm here. For the next hour, the Riverside team can do nothing but watch. I don't want to watch them work. I'll learn bad habits. With only 20 hours left in the competition, the hooligans take the lead and get their Camaro into paint. My deadline was noon today, nine hours past it. But it's good. I'm excited to be in here. We're ready to get some color on this thing. With the red team's car in paint, the blue team is back in the competition. They move their Camaro into paint as well, one hour behind the hooligans. The Riverside team is also putting the finishing touches on their seats and center console. Over on the red side, they're scrambling with their interior. And Willie's custom seats have caught the eye of Jimmy Shine. I am so impressed with that French seam, how tight everything is. And you also modified the top of the seat. You changed the contour. That's just an awesome looking seat. It turned out really nice. I love it. I got to say, that this is probably the most impressive seat I've seen done on this show. With 15 hours left in the build, the hooligans run into trouble with their paint job. What the f is going on, dude? Every time I look at a car, dude, where's Tom? He's in the f 
parts cage. He's all over the place, bro. I'll tell you, it's killing these guys morale. I'm not gonna bust my ass and not sleep for freaking two and a half days because a guy would want to paint a car faster. Unfortunately, we're really far behind in paint right now, and the guys are telling me that Tom's distracted, he's not focused, and he's everywhere but in the paint room. Coming up. Seems like everything that we run into has been a freaking nightmare. Everybody's asking me, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, don't worry about it. You'll see when it's done. Go down. Step away from the car. There are nine hours left in the build. Both teams are neck and neck in paint. For the Riverside team, it's mission critical since their airbrushing is the cornerstone of their design. For the hooligans, Tom's slow pace is pushing them farther and farther behind. This job, if it was in a shop, would take you know, four to six weeks to do. As soon as we got it in there, I actually made a few adjustments to the body lines, and I started on it. Honestly, dude, I hate to sound negative. I don't, I don't see any way this is gonna happen. It's a little frustrating. This thing's been in paint way too long. It needs to come out as soon as possible. Jeff jumps into the booth with Tom to speed up the process. I finally just said, let me come in and double gun this thing. We gotta get this thing done. This paint job normally would take a couple weeks for one guy. We figured with two guys, we could pull off this paint job pretty fast. Okay, let's put this other side on so we can cut. And then we're jamming, we're ready to go. When Jeff took liberty and he went to Tom's to do this double gun this thing, I think that was the best decision that they made to get that car done. With four hours left in the build, the two teams are neck and neck. It now comes down to who has the better game plan. The car's still in paint. You know, Robert tells me he's got some secrets to pull out of that airbrush of his. Right now, I want to know that Isaac and the guys know what to do once the car's out of the paint booth because we are round in the corner and everybody better have something to do. The car's gonna come out, we're gonna get it up on the lift. We're gonna pull the hood and the trunk lid first. That way, Robert can go back in the booth and then start laying down airbrush so we're not standing out here waiting for him. With three and a half hours left, both teams roll their Camaros out of paint in a virtual time. And it seems Tom has redeemed himself. I'm impressed you could lay out flames and paint a multicolored flame job on a car that fast. It was looking good. Lights came on, that thing was on fire. With both teams' cars out of the paint booth, it's a close race to the finish. The blue team removes their hood and trunk and sends them back into the paint booth to get airbrushed. Speedy thinks he has the perfect airbrush design to win over Jimmy Shine. Everybody's asking me, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, don't worry about it. You'll see when it's done. The Riverside team only has a few more steps to go. And after almost 45 hours of mystery, doubt, and speculation, Isaac and Robert finally bring out the newly airbrushed hood. They await the team's reaction. <laughs> oh, man, look at that. <laughs> Speedy. Get it again, man. Robert came up with the airbrush pattern. He took it on his own, and he gave the red team a resting place. Rest in peace, red team. Both teams are in a dead heat. Teams, heads up. We're now down to three hours. Three hours, that's it. The blue team hopes to start their tri-powered motor for the first time. Let's see if this actually works. Yeah! Over on the red team side, they're not so lucky. Crank, cranking, fire in the hole. All right. Honestly, right now we're pretty boned. We wanted that thing to fire. Frustrating. With Tom running out, the hooligans' engine trouble has hit critical. Hi, we don't have any support. Two hours left to go on the clock. Things are looking kind of grim for the hooligans. Seems like everything that we run into with this car has been a freaking nightmare. It's absolutely upsetting to hear a motor turn and not fire over. I got tired of hearing this. All I wanted was the motor to fire. With the red team struggling, Jimmy can't take it anymore. He steps in. Well, the problem they thought they had was the fact that they had the wrong parts. I did a little research, thought about it, checked it out. 
That's what I want right there. The engine finally roars to life. After 47 hours of being on my feet, I had to clear my head, talked a few things over with Jimmy. I noticed the wire going through the cab. It was grounding out the coil. I disconnected it. Boom, thing fires right out. The fact that I actually had to help the hooligans start their engine, well, that's going to weigh heavy on Judgment Day. All right, James, you got 30 minutes. 30 minutes till this competition ends. Running on fumes, both teams rally and give it their all to tie up any loose ends before the 48-hour build is up. Where, it's a black electrical tape. Where is it at? Guys, don't stop what you're doing. If you got anything you can work on, take the trim bezel out. I don't know how long we're into this build. I am so tired. Both teams press on to the finish. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One! Tools down! Done! Step away from the car! Coming up... I look at these cars, and they speak volumes to me about what kind of men you are. Is this some kind of a joke? Is that funny? The teams have worked for 48 straight hours. It's time to reveal the cars. I definitely see this competition ending with the Hooligans in a victory. The blue team put forth a valiant effort, but I definitely feel that we swept them on every aspect of this build. I can't wait to get this car home. This artwork, I mean, it's amazing. And it fits the car perfect. I'm confident about this. The teams may have their thoughts, but there's only one opinion that counts. Jimmy Shine. For this whole competition, I'm looking at many different factors. You know, interior, paint, body, engine bait, the overall concept of the vehicle. Then I take it out and I test it. I drive it. How well does it steer? How well does it brake? Acceleration. At the end of the day, I'm going to reflect upon what I saw go down in the shop. Obstacles that were overcome. It's all going to weigh heavy on Judgment Day. It's time to test the Camaro built by Hot Rod Hooligans of Orange County. No door handle. Awesome. Let's try this thing out. For the performance test, Jimmy Shine will put the cars through a set of rigorous driving maneuvers, taking both vehicles through a slalom and drag strip. Going through the slalom, I noticed that the Ventus V12 tire with a low profile, there was very little roll in the sidewall of the tire, and I was able to maintain control of the vehicle. I could be wrong, but I don't see a sway bar down there. Couldn't go through the slalom as fast as I wanted. A little loose. That front sway bar missing. Huge, huge problem. Next up, the Hot Rod Cruiser, built by Riverside's England Empire Customs. Rubbin, 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 rubbin. Rubbin, rubbin, rubbin. At least it's not on a bolt or something that's gonna cut the tire. You know, it handled really good. A lot of power off the line. Shifted nice. I got more RPM out of this, believe it or not. I think this one, even though it's more set up as a road car, actually worked better on the drag strip than our blown car. The team's choice in the tires was spot on. I mean, they performed well the drag strip, performed well on the slalom. I mean, they're not hard, they're not soft, they're just right. The reason these things rubbed is because they cut the coils too much. Simple fact, it's not the tire's fault at all. I can't put my finger on which one I enjoyed driving more. Well, here we are. Oh, of course you knew we were gonna take the cars out and test them and slalom, drag race. What sucks is the fact that there's no front sway bar in this car. You guys removed the original sway bar and replaced it with... Nothing. Nothing. We ran out of time and we were unable to get that stuff installed because we couldn't find the hardware for it. it. Seems like we had some issues with our engine. Couldn't get the thing fired. I hated jumping in there. And I know that you guys can do it. 48 hours is tough. It just fries your brain. Ryan, have you ever cut a hood before? Never. 
Never. Well, you wouldn't know that by looking at it. How fun was doing that front end? It was ridiculous. I really like the split bumpers. That's just a trick looking move. I like those. You know, if you stop right here and look right here through the car, man, that looks great. And then you look up here and what happened? We ran out of time. Wait a second, you ran out of time. And now it's time to judge Inland Empire Customs. Aw, oh, Team Riverside, my friends in blue. Drag strip, took it down the strip. It's the first time ever that I've smoked all four tires. <laughs> you know how that happened? You know how nice. I was able to do that? Yeah. Yes. Gentlemen, you cut too many coils. They're really hard to replace, but they're easy to cut. You know what, I didn't really like this paint when I saw it come out. I didn't like the color. Here in the shop, it really didn't do anything for me. But out of the sunlight, that house of color shimmering too popped. It looked really good. This airbrushing, it's subtle. From a distance, you don't really notice it. When you get up close, it's a really nice detail. That airbrushing is top shelf. I like how there's little tombstones on here. And it looks like it's the opposing team's names. Yeah. Am I correct? That's right. I tell you what, that character in the center looks an awful lot like me. Are you wishing me ill will? Is this some kind of a joke? Is that funny? I think so. You think it's funny? I think it's funny too, I kind of like that. With all being said, both teams really, really did a fantastic job. Just give me a couple of minutes, I'm gonna go think about this. I'll return with my decision. hours of grueling labor, the cars have been tested and examined. It all comes down to this. Jimmy Shine has left to make his decision. The teams anxiously wait his return. Did anybody get the impression when he came out that at first he wasn't digging the no, paint he, in the interior at all? Yeah, I mean, we know those ice pearls. Once you take it outside, they're meant to be shown in the sun. And it lightens yeah, up the orange. Too. You look at all the detail that you guys pulled off. It was worth it. If we could have put the rest of the interior pieces in. What happened? If we could have hit this thing with 2,500 and ran a buffer over it just to nib the dirt out of it, smooth it out, and striped it, holy dog, we would have stomped a mud hole in these heads. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. All right, let's go. OK, teams. Here we go. Got to spend some time with you guys. Learn your names, learn your characters. I look at these cars and they speak volumes to me about what kind of men you are. I love the flames on this car. I've got some very good friends who do flames. I'm very critical about flames. And those are spot on, done in no time. Team Riverside, the car's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You guys work together as a team. Beautiful fabrication, genuine human beings. But here there's only one winner. I can think of countless reasons why each team should win. But my decision is final. And my decision is... Team Riverside. It was close guys won by a hair. Jimmy comes out with the results. I got butterflies in my stomach. I don't know what to think. He picks up the keys and then walks straight to me. Uh, I mean, that was the most amazing thing ever. I mean, everything that we prayed for came true. When I get the keys to that car, man, I'm going to cruise down my old boss's shop. He said I'd never make it. Honk the horn. Car Wars, man. Speed Channel. I did it. It was great to see the guys from Inland Empire win. They managed their time. They stepped up. They deserve this win because they built a better car. The Hot Rod Hooligans had an excellent design for the car, but in the end, I think they bit off more than they can chew, and we ran out of time. Plus, having Jimmy help us start the engine was a huge strike against us. It was a tough loss. Now that we're done with the competition, you know, obviously I got to get home and be with my family. They've been lacking my attention for the last couple days, so definitely need to be there with them and get to enjoy some good family time. This is what I've got to say to anybody who watches this show, sees this competition, 
and kind of turns their nose up to it and says, oh, that's nothing, I can do that. Hey, go ahead, put together a crew, then you live it. You see what it's really like. This is not fate. This is not contrived. This is real. 